everybody. Uh, can you hear me okay? Thank you, uh, and thank you for that, that introduction by Sarah. I was, I was listening to it, and at the end I was like, oh, she's talking about me, that's cool. Uh, so it's early. <clears throat> it's early, and uh, I'm also pretty nervous, so I'm gonna like take a second. Um, so my name is Marco Rogers. Um, I'm gonna move a little bit, but I, I need my notes so I remember what I wanna say to y'all. Uh, I don't have any slides, so kick back, come along with me, it'll be fun. Um, thank you for having me to keynote at RailsConf 2017. Um, let me get the, the work stuff out of the way, the who I am stuff. Um, I work at a company called Clover Health, uh, and we are building a different kind of health insurance company. Uh, it's backed by technology, it's data driven, and our goal is to focus on uh, our members and their health and keeping them on a path uh, to living well uh, as a way for us to be successful as an insurance company. It's really cool, but I'm not here to talk about that today. Um, I'm not here to talk about Rails today either. Uh, I don't actually know Rails, and they promised me that that was okay uh, <laughs> before I came. Um, I've, uh, so I'm not here to talk about programming really either. Uh, I've been a manager for like several years now, so if I start to talk to you about programming, you'll probably like tune out, check your email, like push to production, whatever you're doing when you're not paying attention to talks, because um, that's not gonna happen. Um, what I am here to talk about today is how it feels uh, to be black in tech. Uh, I'm gonna let that hang for a second so you can adjust. Um, it's gonna happen. Um, but don't, don't worry, right? Like, it, we'll get through this. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't come to start controversy on my, my first invitation to, to RailsConf. Uh, this talk will be easy for you. It'll, it'll be hard for me, okay? Uh, I'm gonna take on all the, the hardness. Um, I've spoken at conferences before, uh, but this is my first keynote address. Um, and when Sarah and the other, and the other organizers kind of reached out to me, I asked them, like, why are you interested in me giving a talk um, at RailsConf? And they, you know, uh, said what she just said. They said, you know, we really appreciate your voice uh, on Twitter, uh, blog posts that you've written. They've seen other, my, my other talks. And they said, we want you to come and talk uh, about whatever is important to you. Uh, and we want, we want you to share that with us. And when I asked other people, like, what do you want me to talk about? Like, what would you want to hear me talk about? Like, friends and, and whatnot. Um, a lot of the people that I know who are not black, they said that they wanted to hear me talk about being black in tech. Like, that's a thing um, that people want to talk about. We've been talking about diversity and inclusion a lot, a long time. Uh, but, you know, we kind of have to start digging into different axes on this. Uh, and we've talked a lot about being a woman in tech, too, I think. I think we're even really good at that. Uh, we don't get to talk about being black in tech very much. Um, so people said that's one of the, the, what they wanted to hear about. Uh, and I chewed on that for a second. I was like, nah, nah, it's not happening. Uh, I'm not that brave, right? Um, and so I wrote a different talk. Uh, I wrote a talk uh, that I thought was good, uh, that my wife thought was good, other people told me it was good. Uh, but it was a regular talk. It did not pass my bar for keynote worthy. Um, the keynote slot says, like, basically keynotes is like, there's no other activities planned right now. I need all of y'all to come in here and hear what this person has to say. Um, it's a lot of pressure, right? Um, and so I asked myself, like, what qualifications do I have, uh, you know, to come and ask you hundreds of people to come in and listen to me for however long. What makes me unique is what I ask myself. Um, I've done a lot of interesting things, I think, uh, but only one thing really sprang up as unique to me, um, and that's that I have had a pretty good career in tech for like 12 plus years, been pretty successful, uh, and I've been black that entire time. <laughs> um, we're <laughs> We're laughing, right? That's great. I'm glad y'all are awake. Uh, but uh, that's uncommon, right? <laughs> it's, not, it's not normal. Um, and I mean, this is real talk today. Like, I want to have a real conversation with you about it. Um, we know the diversity numbers uh, in tech are not good for, for black people, right? Like, companies are releasing their stats, and they're showing, like, 2%, 1% African-American, sometimes 0%. 
right? Like sometimes it's just like a line and 0% on their pie chart. Um, and then sometimes it gets crazy and it's like 4 or 5%, people start high-fiving, you know what I mean? Um, but it's not great. Um, it's so uncommon that, you know, I have people ask me all the time, like, how did you do it? Like, you know, they're like, Marco, like, how, how did you make it, right? Um, I, I don't know uh, if that question is the right question, but it seems like one that people want to talk about. So, um, so I found some courage, and I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about it at least. We can't tell the whole story. We don't have that much time, but I'll talk to a, li a little bit about it. Um, so, you know, what I'm here to talk about is how it feels to survive as a black person in tech, when all the evidence seems to point to the fact that that's actually really hard to do. Um, if I was putting a title on this talk, it would be something like survival tips for being black in tech. Um, and in parentheses, I would, I would say, like, if you're Marco, right? Because I, I can only speak for me. Um, if I was trying to speak for, like, all of blackness, they would, like, revoke my membership or something. It's, don't, uh, I can only talk to you about me, but hopefully we'll, we'll learn something. Um, so a couple years ago, I gave a talk at AlterConf, um, and it was called Conforming to Succeed. Uh, and that talk was about some of my formative years growing up and how, uh, how I initially found my way towards a career in tech, right? Um, you can find that on the interwebs. You should check it out. It's good. Um, this one basically picks up where that one left off, uh, which is when, with me graduating college. Um, I got a... I got a degree in computer science from Georgia Tech. I'm originally from, from Atlanta, Georgia. And I went to Tech. Nice, OK. Um, getting my career started was pretty rocky. Uh, outwardly, you know, my, my situation upon graduating was, was, was pretty dismal. It wasn't atypical, though, right? Like, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, I was not a stellar student which some people are surprised by. Uh, I've, been on a I've been on a long journey to getting to the point where uh, I know how to like, show up and be good. I was not a good student. Um, I didn't have a lot of prospects, right? Like, I didn't have any internships while I was in school. You know, I, I applied. I got no, no callbacks, no internships, no tech-related clubs. Like, I hadn't found any like, open source communities to start to build my portfolio. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. I did not have people beating down my door. Uh, I was just a recent grad um, trying to find a job while black. Um, things weren't looking good, right? Like, uh, I was searching around in Atlanta. Um, I wasn't getting any callbacks. Uh, I didn't know any better, because Atlanta was not a good place to be searching uh, for tech jobs, but that's the only place I had ever been. And I didn't actually know how to look for jobs anywhere else. Uh, there wasn't much of a tech scene in Atlanta like there is now. There's actually a pretty good scene. Um, but I was starting to feel really discouraged. Uh, I had spent a lot of money on this on this degree. Me and my family had spent a lot of money on it. Uh, and I just wanted to get a job, right? So my first survival tip, the first tip that I picked up uh, for surviving as a black person in tech was pretty simple. Um, you got to know some white people. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, that's not really what I mean, right? Like, uh, you know, like, what I really mean is that you have to know some people already in tech so that they can vouch for you, right? So that they can like get your foot in the door or whatever. Everybody kind of needs their foot in the door. Uh, for me, it was a buddy of mine uh, from school. He's a white guy, he's still a really good friend of mine. He called me up, he was in the DC area, and he was like, I'm working at this place, I can recommend you, you should come work here. So that worked out. Um, but you might be saying to yourself, you might be thinking right now, like, when's it get to the part where like, it's hard because he's black, right? Um, I mean, anybody can make the right connections and, and get their foot in the door. <sighs> Except, like, but we, we know that's not true, though, right? Like, if you're paying attention, if, you, if you've been paying attention to this conversation about diversity, um, you know that most people are already in tech, right? Like, most people, they make connections with people who are like them, right? Like, you, we tend to cluster around our racial and, uh, like, and ethnic identities, right? Like, that's a thing. That's, that's why they're racial and ethnic identities. White people make connections with white people. And presumably, I can make connections with people who look like me, right? Um, except I didn't see any of those people. They, were, they did not exist. Um, I didn't meet any other black students in the College of Computing at Georgia Tech. I didn't have any black professors my entire time there. 
I was kind of on my own, right? Like I, I had to, I had to reach out to the whoever was around me and, and try to make some connections. Uh, and I didn't really know how to do that, right? Uh, but I, I did my best, and and most of those people around me were were white, and so to me, that's what it, that's what it was. That's actually how it played out. Like if I wanted to get anywhere, like I make friends with some white people. That's kind of how it goes. <sighs> but that's okay, right? Like that's that's actually expected. Um, until we make more progress with this diversity problem, we should expect people to follow their networks, right? To, to kind of cluster around these racial and ethnic trends. Like, that's going to keep happening. There's nothing wrong with that inherently. Um, except that it has some fallout, right? Like, some realities for people who are trying to make it to a different place from where they come from. Um, networking for black people in tech was really slim. So, so what I am saying to you right now uh, is if you need to make connections to get into tech uh, and you're black, you might have to explicitly be the exception to that trend of only sticking with your ethnic identity before you can even get started, before you can do anything. You have to not be that, right? You gotta do something different than what all the statistics are telling you is gonna happen. Uh, and I got lucky, right? Like, buddy of mine, he reached out to me. Like, he, he was also a recent grad. He got his job, you know how he got it? His dad. His dad was in construction, uh, but knew, was friends with a guy, and he knew a guy, and he owned a, a web shop. And he was like, yeah, my son needs a job. And so they hooked that up, you know? Which I have no problem with, by the way. Like, get the hook up, like, do it. Like, pull some strings, pull all the strings. Like, get in where you can fit in. Uh, and I only had one string, that one friend who reached out to me. Uh, and it worked out, right? But I don't know how many people never had any strings. Didn't get to do anything because they, didn't, they, didn't, they weren't able to buck whatever trends were keeping them from finding the right network. So um, it worked out for me. Um, and I had my, my first phone interview. Uh, real quick, I think it's funny. It's not actually uh, that important, but I think it's funny. My first phone interview, I got my first job. Uh, because the phone interview was, was useless. Like they, <laughs> He asked me like what I was doing in school or whatever, and I told him, and it was basically like nothing, like we built some, some cruddy apps or whatever. Uh, and the, the one key question, I feel like this is the one key question that he asked me that got me the job. Because I told him that the language that I used in school was, was Java for most things, right? Uh, and he like threw this question at me. He's like, he's like oh, so you said, you said you do mostly Java. Does that include JavaScript? Um, and I, I'm seriously like he asked it like that. And I don't know if he, it was a trick question. <laughs> But that's how he asked. He was like, does that include JavaScript? Have you done JavaScript? Um, and I, uh, I knew that those two were not the same thing. <laughs> um, I, didn't know, I didn't know a whole lot else, but I knew that those two were not the same thing. And I was like, uh, oh, I haven't done much JavaScript, but like, that's not the same thing, right? And he was like, cool, you should just come up here and work. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I had gone through so much struggle just trying to get a callback, trying to get somebody to talk to me or whatever. Uh, and I literally got a job because my buddy referred me and because I knew that Java and JavaScript were not the same thing. Like, um, it's wild, right? Like, there's no barrier except for the social ones. To, re to me, really, that's my experience. There's no barrier except for the social ones. Um, so anyway, um, I got my first job. Uh, I'm working at a, a web consulting shop in DC, and I'm killing it, y'all. Um, I don't know how well I'm actually doing, but I kept getting paychecks, which for me was the only criteria for killing it. Like, <laughs> I was knocking it out, because every two weeks, they would give me money. Um, so I made a, a lot of good friends, but at the same time, like, I'm feeling out of place, right? Like, I'm the only black person on my team, and this was true for a long time. It didn't bother me necessarily, but I couldn't help but notice, right? Uh, in the same way, like, I, I don't know if y'all know, know this, right, but like black people, when we walk into a room, any room, we like immediately scan the room to see how many other black people are in it. This is a thing. Like, it, it doesn't make a difference. Like, you're not gonna do anything, but like, you just wanna know. You just gotta read the atmosphere in the room, right? Like, I've, I've, I've know, I know at least two people I saw walking here. I could, I could actually point to you where they're sitting, too, but I won't do that, because it'd probably be embarrassing. <laughs> Um, but you got to read the atmosphere, right? So, uh, but one day, this changed. 
they hired another black person. Um, let's call him Carl. Uh, names have been changed to protect the innocent. Let's call him Carl. Uh, and by, by the innocent, I mean me. Like, <laughs> if people recognize themselves in this talk, I don't want them to be mad at me. And so we're going to change all the names. Um, Carl was similar to me in a lot of ways. Uh, he was a recent grad. They hired a lot of recent grads. Uh, he had a CS degree from a decent school, you know. Um, and, and he was black. Um, OK, so, so those might be like the only ways that he was similar to me. But <laughs> that's enough, right? Like, that was enough. Uh, I mean, there's no other black people around. Like, I, I hope that this crowd, at least, uh, that we've progressed enough to the point where we understand that having another person around who looks like you, like, that matters, right? It matters a lot. Um, that's part of why diversity is important. Seeing yourself reflected around you and people being successful is a, has a huge impact on whether you are able to be successful, right? So all of a sudden, I had this other person that could reflect back at me uh, what was going on. If you take nothing else away from this talk, uh, let it be that, right? Let, like, let it be like hearing from me uh, that being black always matters, always. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, right? Like, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do that same thing. I'm trying to do it too, but I'm trying to do it while black. And that means that the rules might be different. They might not be, right? They aren't always different, but they might be. So I have to like tread carefully, and it helps if I see what happens with other people who are trying to do this thing while also black. So even though me and Carl weren't that tight, I'm personally invested in what happens to him. He's like the only other data point I have for what happens to black people in tech, besides me. Uh, well, it was not a good data point. Uh, Carl did not do awesome, and he was let go within six months. Um, I had been there, uh, I don't know, not, not that long. Maybe I had been there like six months, and he was let go within six months uh, of him coming. Um, and I remember vividly the reasons that were given. Uh, these might sound familiar to some of y'all. He wasn't really picking things up fast enough, you know? Like he didn't, and also, right, he didn't really have the right attitude. Carl didn't have the right attitude. Uh, to this day, I don't really know what the right attitude is. Um, and I don't really know how fast you have to pick something up for that to be fast enough and for you to not be fired. Uh, I still don't know. Um, but I, I, had to, I had to put this together with what I was able to observe about Carl for myself. Uh, and what I observed is that, like, Carl was always asking for help, right? Like, he was pretty upfront about what he knew and what he didn't feel comfortable with and what he didn't feel capable of. Um, Carl, when he came in, he, he knew, like, C Sharp and .NET. Like, that was the language that he was most familiar with. Uh, but our shot was mostly Python at that time. Uh, and so he was kind of expected to transition. Like, he was picking up a new language. Uh, and he was humble enough to ask for help with it. Uh, and within six months, he was gone. So uh, the next survival tip that I picked up, don't ask for help. <laughs> don't ask anybody for anything. Don't admit that you're having a hard time. Keep your head down. Just make it, make it work. Don't tell people uh, that you're struggling. Um, Y'all, this is not good life advice. <laughs> this is not a good lesson. It took me a long time to unlearn it, right? Like, I don't give people this advice. It's not healthy. Uh, but remember, right, like, these are tips for survival, right? Like, I was trying to adapt to the environment that I found myself in, and I didn't have any guidance, right? Nobody was telling me how this worked. I just saw people who looked like me dropping like flies. So, uh, um, you know, that's kind of how it worked out. Um, the first black engineer that I had ever worked with, he took a hit um, because he didn't prove that he deserved to be there. And all I could do was try to learn from that uh, to make sure that I wasn't next. Um, Carl is not in tech anymore, as far as I know. He bounced around to some other jobs. He did not, didn't really recover from that. Like, I don't know what that does to your confidence. Um, and he had to find another profession, right? So we're like, we're like one down. <laughs> like two black engineers, one of them already off the table. Um, fast forward a couple years. I'm actually doing well now. Like, I, I know the computers, right? Like, sometimes people ask me questions about computers, and I know the answers <laughs> to those questions. So, like, it's, it's lit, right? Like, I feel pretty good about it. I'm like, okay, 
oh, I, might, I might deserve to be here. Um, I'm going out to client sites now. Uh, we got contracted out. Uh, and I'm contracting for this big company, big tech company. Uh, they got a lot of in-house devs, but they also like bring in contractors to kind of enhance their internal teams. And, and we worked with them a lot during that time period. Uh, so I walked onto this team, and we were building a web-based RSS reader. This was like 2007, so it was like a really awesome project. Um, and so that's where I got to work with my second black engineer, second one I had ever met. Um, yeah, so like, that's, and that's not an exaggeration. Like, years into my career in tech, and I've worked with exactly two black devs. Um, so, you know, you can see that like, there's not a lot of opportunity for me to observe what's supposed to happen here. I'm just trying to like, make my way. So the second guy, let's call him Lester. Uh, Lester was different from me, and he was different from Carl too, right? Like, Lester seemed comfortable, right? Like, Lester would come in at like 10.30, 11 o'clock sometimes. He wouldn't even apologize. I was like, you know, whatever. Um, his clothes were pretty disheveled most of the time. Like, this, this was contractor land, right? Like, I had to wear a button down to, to sit at a desk and type, right? Uh, but he was like wearing t-shirts. And like, wearing t-shirts was like a big deal to me. I was like, I wanna wear t-shirts. I, like, I don't like collars. Make my neck itchy. Lester was even like, he was like even sarcastic and snarky with people. Um, even, pe even his bosses, right? Like even the people who were like running the project, he would give them crap all the time. But everybody seemed to be okay with it, right? Like they were just like, yeah, whatever, that's Lester. He, you know, he does what he does. Um, let me tell you, y'all, this was fascinating to me. <laughs> I didn't really understand. Like keep in mind, my whole career had been about like, like, I don't even supposed to be here. Like, I got in, I was really lucky. Like, I'm hustling hard to prove that I deserve to be here. And here was a guy, he seemed to not give a crap, right? Uh, but he was still respected. For all intents and purposes, Lester has somehow managed to achieve the confidence of someone who was black in tech, but not feeling like they were struggling to survive. And I was like, what is this magic? I need it, right? Like, I need that. I don't know where you get it from, but I need that. Um, so I got to know Lester a little bit. Um, this was tough, right? Like, I had to, I had to be careful because uh, I was still a junior member of the team. I was a contractor, right? Like, you got to play your cards close to the chest. Remember, you can't, you can't let them know that you don't know what you're doing. Like, that's not, that's not cool. Uh, but Lester and I got friendly enough that one day I was able to ask him, like, why are you so comfortable, <laughs> right? Like, how? So it was a conversation that I had, I had, I've only been able to have with black people, to be honest, right? Because I was using very few words, but he knew exactly what I was talking about. Like, we were right on the same page. Uh, I'm going to give you the dramatized version. It was pretty close to this. Uh, but, you know, it was like, Lester, man, like, how do you do it? Like, I mean, you walk in here and you just post up, like, like it's all good. And, like, what is that? How do you, how do you get away with it? That's what I said. That's awesome. <laughs> and then, uh, but he was right with me. He didn't miss a beat. He was like, nah, I hear you, little homie, right? Like, he didn't, he didn't call me a little homie as a dramatization, right? Remember. <laughs> um, he was like, nah, I hear you, man. Uh, but it is what it is. He was like, you know, I'm not worried about it. Like, they know they couldn't do this without me. <sighs> Y'all, this blew my mind, okay? Like, this was, this blew my mind. I, I mean, like, I had met people who had this kind of, like, nonchalant confidence. Like, you can't be in tech without meeting those people. But I had no idea you could do that while also black. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't think, like, everybody, everybody since the beginning of time had told me, if you want to be successful, you have to be, like, straight-laced, and you got to be on top of your stuff, and, like, you have to be very personable, and, like, you, all that stuff. Like, you got to be twice as good. I know y'all heard this, right? Like, that's real. Like, black people tell each other that all the time, passed down in our history. Like, you better get your stuff together, because they're not going to let you hang around acting like that. That's what we hear all the time. And then, like, there's Lester, right? Um, but so so I, I, I had to talk to him about it. I had to find out more about it. Um, and I found out that Lester had been doing this for a long time, right? Like, he was already 10 years into his career. He had 10 years under his belt, um, a lot of it with this same company. He had paid his dues already. He was senior. 
people respected him because he had already spent years and years proving that he deserved to be here. Um, so at this point, he like leaned on that reputation and he made himself comfortable, right? Came in late, wore whatever he wanted. He got paid a lot, you know what I mean? And like, man, I wanted to be Lester. Like, I, I really wanted to be Lester when I grew up. Um, so my, ne my, my next survival tip came from Lester. This was the first piece of advice that I have ever gotten from another black person in tech. It's like years after I started. Um, and I, I don't get to talk to any other black person to tell me like what it's like. And I finally met one person. And I was like, what's up? Like, what do I do? Um, and he's like, nah, you can't be like me. He's like, don't do that. <laughs> he's like, you got to earn this. You gotta, I had to work for a long time. I used to be like you. And so you do that until you can be like me. And it takes a long time. <laughs> the advice that he gave me was, always be better than they expect you to be. Never let them see your confidence waver. Because if you don't believe you're worth it, they won't either. Right? That was his advice. Uh, and this resonated with me. It matched exactly with what I had just seen happen to Carl, right? Like, not just happened, but, you know, like, that matched up. I was like, right. Like, right. Like, Carl was, like, trying to be honest with them. He's like, I don't kind of know what I'm doing. And they were like, sorry, that's not how it's going to work. So this is kind of a big deal, right? When we, when we talk about barriers to diversity and inclusion, um, a lot of us are starting to recognize the pervasiveness of imposter syndrome, right? People feeling like they don't belong or they're not good enough. Like, no matter what people tell them, they, they always feel like an imposter. And we need to talk about it because a lot of people struggle with it. It's a real thing. Um, but that's not my life. Um, to survive in tech while black, I never felt like I had the luxury of not believing in myself. Like, that was just not a thing, right? Like, I always had to show up. Like, I was ready to be better than everybody else. Otherwise, they would tell me to go home, right? So, so far, like, I have two examples uh, of people who look like me in tech. One of them was honest and open about his shortcomings, and they told him to go home. And the other one, he said, never let them see you sweat. And he made more money than any black person I had ever met. And I, I don't just mean in tech. I mean, like, anybody ever, right? Like, and I grew up in Atlanta. I knew a lot of black people. And he made more money than all of them, by far. So it was a real easy choice for me to try to figure out who to emulate, you know? Like, today, when people talk about imposter syndrome, right, I have a lot of sympathy for them. Like, I know it's a real thing. Uh, but... I'm not telling black people that getting comfortable with imposter syndrome is going to help. Because I don't believe that. Like, that has not been my experience. And so I can, like, participate in that conversation, like, a little bit, but not a lot. Like, it doesn't work that way for me and a lot of people that I know. Um, you got to bring your A game, right? Like, you got to impress people early and often. Otherwise, you might not be around long enough to get comfortable. You know, you don't have that kind of, you don't have that kind of time. So fast forward a few more years. Uh, this, pro this is the last story, I think. Um, so I'm pretty confident in my skills at this point. I'm leading like big projects. Like I'm making real good money. Um, I even tell other people what to do occasionally, and they do it, right? Like, was, which was weird, right? I liked it. It was kind of weird. Um, and I took on a project for a really big client. They had real deep pockets. They were paying us a lot of money. It was a big, like, multi-phase software project. Had multiple teams on it, different contracting companies participating in it. Um, and I'm leading the team that was building the website out. It was a lot of fancy uh, features with search and e-commerce and stuff. And so we were building a website. And the other teams were building data sets and web services for us to use. Um, so as things ramped up, I started interacting with other teams, um, and another black dev shows up. This was Trey. And Trey was like the fifth or sixth like, black dev that I had come across uh, at this point. It was like, I don't know, four years into my, my career or whatever. Uh, but I don't, like, I don't even get excited anymore now, right? Like, I'm like, man, one of us pops up like every six months, right? It's not even special anymore, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, so, plus, like, I had a persona now, also. Uh, 
I was about business, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I was, I was actually killing it, like actually. I was working long hours, never asked people for help, always acting like I knew what I was doing. Never let them see you sweat, right? Always be better than what they expect. Uh, I was probably a jerk to a lot of people. Um, this was not a good period for me. Um, but it seemed to be serving me well, right? Like, I had been here for years. I was still here, right? Like, I had proved to people that I deserved to be here. Uh, and I started to think, like, maybe it wasn't so hard to survive in tech while black. Maybe people were making it harder than it needed to be, right? Uh, nah. <laughs> I was about to come crashing down. Like, that was, that was false. Um, I, never, I never found out how Trey actually got onto the team. Um, if I was speculating based on the limited data points I had, I would probably say that he had a white friend from college, and like his, his dad got him a job, and then that white friend called him and got him onto the team. But that was, that's a very limited data set. So like I, you know, I'm probably projecting to a certain extent. That's all I know about how black people get into tech at this point. Um, so, uh, but you know, I should tell you like what was my, what was my relationship with Trey, right? Um, Trey was in charge of web services. So in this world, like me getting my work delivered was directly dependent on him getting his work delivered, right? Like he had to, he had to deliver me the web services so that I could integrate. This is like the mid 2000s, right? Like there's, there, there ain't no agile. Like we got Gantt charts and waterfalls everywhere. Like, you know, there's dependencies and him, he was first and then I was second, like on the chart. And so, uh, so like I had to work with him and I needed him to give me his stuff. Um, and I, I didn't like Trey very much. I didn't like working with Trey because he didn't, he didn't move fast enough for me. You know, I was constantly waiting on him. <sighs> now, uh, in hindsight, I was missing something about this project that a bunch of other contractors like Trey seem to understand already. Um, when you have a big client with deep pockets, it pays to not move very fast, right? And I mean like literally it pays, like you're hourly you're billing them. So like the longer you take, the more money you get. Um, and everybody was doing that on this project. To be honest, like my boss was okay with me doing that too. Like he, he didn't really say that, but he was just like, you know, I was telling him about time, he was like, nah, I'll be fine. So, um, but that, like that didn't sit well with me. That, that was never the kind of attitude that sat well with me. Uh, for one thing, like my, my work ethic is too strong. It didn't, didn't really allow it. It felt dishonest to me. Like we were still billing them, right? Like I wasn't in charge of billing, so somebody would bill them whether I did work or not, and I, did, I just didn't feel good about that. But also, also remember uh, that th like I'm, I'm still trying to survive. Like I'm doing better, I'm feeling more comfortable with it, but I'm still trying to survive. Um, and that depends on me constantly showing other people that I was awesome, right, that I deserve to be here. Because there's still, there's no other black people. There's like me and Trey. There's like dozens of people on this project, and it was just me and Trey. So, um, Working with Trey bothered me, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't see him check things in very often. Like, he would take days on something that I felt should be much easier than what he was making it out to be. Um, and he was throwing all the Gantt charts off, man. Like, we worked a lot, we worked hard on those, so he was throwing them all off. Um, if I was gonna hit my deadlines, like, he had to hit his. I, I, I needed Trey to step up. I started to feel like Trey was kind of lazy, you know? I started to feel like, Trey wasn't picking things up fast enough. You know what I mean? Like maybe he didn't have the right attitude. So you, I mean, you see what's going on here, right? Like, like I'm becoming that guy, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Like that guy, he's like a little bit too full of himself. Um, he starts to undermine the people around him, you know? Like subtly at first, like I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk, right? Like I just want to get things done, you know? Like. I'm trying to be awesome, and you're kind of like cramping my style right now. That guy, I was that guy. So I decided that I was gonna talk to somebody about getting things back on track. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I, I did what that guy does. Like I, I went to the higher ups, and I expressed some concerns about the timeline, you know? I didn't call Trey out specifically, but I made it known that it, it didn't feel to me like the web services were materializing fast enough. Like I, I had the business jargon down, y'all, like I was on it. Like I didn't say Trey's name at all, but they knew what I was talking about. Um, so 
you know, I mean, this would be cool, right? Like, you know, Trey will get like a kick in the pants, uh, and then we'll get things rolling. I'll be able to be awesome again. But nah, right? Like this, this story is about survival, so you know that's not how it went. Um, in my vague recollection of this, uh, which may also be dramatized for this story, but I had this conversation on a Thursday. Uh, and by next Tuesday, we were informed that Trey was no longer on the team. Y'all, when I tell you that, like, that took all the air out of me, right? Like, I didn't know how to process that. Like, we were a team. Like, we had been working together. Like, it's not that I ain't like him. He was just bothering me. Like, you know, but he was gone. That, like, snapped me right back into reality, right? I was, I was right back to being keenly aware that was the only black dev for miles around here. And I got reminded how quickly they get rid of folks who look like me. At the drop of a hat, gone. Only this time it was my fault. Um, remember, at, at this stage, we're still clocking in at like less than eight black devs that I had ever seen in my career, including me. Um, and I had just helped one of them get fired. I, I didn't even have the courage to ask what happened. Like, I, didn't, I knew what happened, right? They probably pulled Trey aside, and they were probably like, not really picking things up fast enough. Doesn't really feel like you have the right attitude for this project, so kind of have to let you go. That was the end of me being that guy nipped in the bud, like, quickly. Because my, my, this last tip for surviving in tech while black, you never help them get rid of us. Never. The only reason I'm here and able to, like, talk to y'all today is because I managed to never get on the wrong person's bad side. Or, like, I managed to make the right, the right kind of white friends who would step up and, like, put in a good word for me, you know? Or I managed to be just awesome enough to offset whoever else was trying to undermine me. But it doesn't feel awesome. It feels lucky. It feels really lucky. I mean, like, my, my confidence is still intact. Like, I, I know what I can do. I, I know what I'm capable of. But right alongside that, that sits a healthy respect for still how lucky I am to be able to be here. Uh, so that has some fallout, right? Like these lessons you learn to have fallout. Like to this day, I feel ex I, it's extremely difficult for me to give any kind of negative feedback to other black people. It doesn't feel right. Can't do it. I'll pass. Bow out. I'll like, I won't say anything. There's not enough of us who even get a shot at all for me to be making it harder. Like one step harder at all. I can't do it. Um, so I've given you a few survival tips. This is a bunch of them, but we don't have that much time, like I said. Um, maybe, maybe this talk is not what you expected, like even when I told you we were going to talk about being black. Um, you might have expected to talk about like discrimination and microaggressions and stuff. And that stuff happens too. I got a lot of those stories. Like if you've got some more keynotes, I'll, I'll fill them up. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, I, I did, that stuff is what happens to black people in tech, right? But what I wanted to talk about is how it feels to be a black person in tech, you know? Because, like, that's what I feel like I want people to walk away with is, like, understanding that, you know, those few people that you see dotted around, like, there's a lot going on for them to be here. There's a lot going on. For the longest time, being black in tech it felt like being on a tightrope, you know? Felt like, like I'm, I'm, out, I'm out there by myself because like most people didn't even get to get started. They didn't, they didn't even get shown where the tightrope was, so they didn't even get a chance to try. I'm out here by myself and I'm concentrating, right? Because like everybody else is walking around, right? Like nobody else gets, has to walk on the tightrope, but I still have to make it to the end at the same time they do, or maybe even faster. So I'm concentrating. And then, like, Carl comes up behind me, right? Uh, and I, I, like, I hear him, and he slips and falls. 
Uh, and I, I can't turn around. Like, I had to keep my eyes trained on the rope. I, I don't feel safe yet. Like, you know, I, I don't feel like I even have my legs under me. So I can't do anything about that. And then, like, Lester comes up. And, like, Lester's riding a unicycle. He's, like, you know, he's doing laps around me and stuff. I don't even know how you do laps on a tightrope, but he's doing it. Like, you know, <laughs> damn it, Lester. Um, and I, you know, I, like, I reach out to him. Uh, and he's like, nah, little homie, like, don't try this yet. You're not ready, but don't fall. That's not good. And he just speeds off. Like, I never see him again. So I'm getting a little bit better, right? Like, but then, like, I come up behind Trey, right, on this tightrope. Uh, and I'm, like, I'm just starting to feel like I'm gaining my momentum, right? Like, I'm getting the hang of this, and I'm, like, I'm starting to move a little bit faster, and Trey's like, he's slowing me down, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I got to get to the end, remember? I got I to gotta be at least as fast as everybody else. And he's slowing me down. So, like, you know, I don't have no ill will, but I, like, nudge him. I'm like, get out of the way, man. I'm, I'm, I'm here to play. I'm about to do it. Uh, and he loses his balance, and he falls. And I, I lose sight of Trey. I'm, he's gone. It's just me now. Like, I can make it to the end, but, like, just watching people drop him. <sighs> That's what it feels like. All the time, it felt that way a long, long time. It's still in the back of my head now, but like for a long time, that's how it felt. It's like I was still here, like I got to show up every day, right? They didn't pull me into a conference room, tell me I had a bad attitude, right? But I'm watching everybody around me dropping out. Uh, I know this got real depressing. Uh, I apologize for starting your morning off this way, but like this is real talk, right? Like I wanted to have a real conversation with you about what it means for this industry to have such a poor track record with black people. Um, those of us who are making it feel like we're running a gauntlet a lot of times, you know? Like, just to be here, just to stand in this room, I had to go through a lot. I got into talking about diversity and inclusion more because I know this is not what it should be like. We are, I think we all know, like at this point, we all know this is not what it should be like. Um, I want to work towards a world where black people can stop getting this advice. It's terrible advice, right? Like, maybe you can't get a call back without knowing a white person who already works there, right? Like, that should be possible. That should be a thing that happens, right? Maybe you don't have to hit the ground running all the time. Maybe you can show up and, like, ask for help and have people, like, support you while you grow. Maybe one day we'll, like, have enough black people that it's okay for, for us to point to somebody who's not doing too well and be like, you need to do better. And like not feel like we might be like killing their career by saying that. Like that should happen, right? That should be a thing that's possible. I mean, it's, it's simple, it should be simple. All I want is to have enough black people around that it doesn't feel like survival for me to be here, right? Like I, wanna, I want this talk to be stupid because nobody believes that this is a thing. I want us to be able to put that tightrope away, you know? I want us to stop pushing so hard so we can spend our time and energy on something better, you know what I mean? Like, I want to spend my time on something better. I'm, I'm going to learn Rails at some point. Like, if, as soon as I get a minute, like, that's going to be a thing. Um, so anyway, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up. Um, but just a, a couple things, like, and this is, this is recent. This wasn't really even part of the talk. But um, my cousin, I got a little cousin, and he just started college. Uh, and he's reaching out to me. He's like, I'm going to do computer science, right? And, like, I know this kid, so I'm like, right, bro, like, cool. Yeah, that's going to happen, right? But he keeps coming back to me. He's like, nah, nah, I'm doing it, right? And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being a very good cousin. I'm like, all right, why, why do you think this is what you want to do? I should be encouraging him, but I'm like, you're not that reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, but then he's like, he's like, I, I want to do what you do, right? He's like, you, you know what I'm saying? You, your life is great. Like, you get to do whatever you want to do, and, like, you make more money than any black person I've ever met. <sighs> he's right. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> no, like, for real, though. I, I make more money than any black people he and I have ever met. <laughs> And so I was like, oh, well, he must be serious about it, right? And so uh, I got to start helping him, right? Like, I'm, 
bringing him and his brother out here, flying him out to, to California to hang out with me a little bit so we can talk about it. They ain't, never, they ain't never been nowhere. They ain't never been to California. But I got to do it, right? I got to bring them out um, and try to figure out how to get them going, try to figure out how to help them, try to figure out how to give them a leg up where I didn't have one, right? Like, they already know a black person in tech, at least one, right? So maybe, maybe that'll work out. That's all. That's all I got, y'all. Um, thanks so much for having me and letting me uh, get this stuff off my chest uh, to you today. Um, I'll be hanging around the rest of the day. Feel free to come chat with me. Uh, I'm open to it. Um, and thanks.